My name is Rowena Dash. I'm the executive director of the Neil Cochran House Museum. We're an 1856 historic site located just to the west of the University of Texas at Austin in what is now called West Campus. Uh, we have two original structures still standing on our site. The home, which you're in right now, as well as a two-story slave quarters that is situated just behind the main building. We interpret the first century of Austin history, uh, beginning all the way back in 1839 with the establishment of the town as the uh, national capital of Texas, up to about 1930, so the beginning of the Great Depression. We are a historically furnished home, and uh, as we interpret the Neal and the Cochrane time period, so starting right around 1876, and then going up through the 1920s, and we also present a variety of rotating art and history exhibitions, both um, in our permanent exhibition spaces and then from time to time um, installed within the historic rooms themselves. One of the most interesting objects in the Neil Cochran House Museum's collection is the painting that you see behind me, 1901 Blue Bonnets and Evening Primrose by a female artist named Mo Walker. Now this painting is beautiful, of course, um, but it actually has a historical significance that connects us deeply to the story of Texas as well as to the story of the National Society of the Colonial Dames of America in Texas, who um, are the organization that own and operate this museum and use our site as their headquarters. So back in 1901, this painting was new, um, and the state government was in the process of trying to determine what the state flower of Texas should be. And um, the, the Colonial Danes, it was a new organization, they were only three years old, and they had established their headquarters in Austin, and the Austin Danes were paying attention to this debate, and they saw that the blue bonnet was up against two other flowers, uh, the, the prickly pear cactus from West Texas, and the cotton bowl from East Texas. And the dames just shook their heads. And of course, here we are in Central Texas, which is the home of the Blue Bonnet, and so that, that certainly helped. But um, they just thought, yeah, this, this is impossible. I mean, we can't, we can't have the cotton bowl or the prickly pear cactus as the state flower of Texas. So um, one of the members knew Mode Walker and called her up and said, Mode, do you have any paintings of Blue Bonnets? We need a painting of Blue Bonnets. And they needed it like then. And she said, well, um, I have this still life. You're welcome to borrow it. And so um, the, these women, they, they went to her studio, they borrowed her painting, and they took it to the state capitol and uh, put it on the floor of uh, the legislature. And along with it, they brought in mason jars of blue bonnets and put a jar of blue bonnets on every legislator's desk so that when the time for the vote came, not only was that painting in the room, but every politician was staring at his very own blue bonnet. Um, the blue bonnet carried the day, as we all know, and, um, and we have this painting, as well as the Colonial Dames, at least in part, to thank for it. So this spring, we are thrilled to be presenting Hope for Spring, the Flower of Texas. This is a juried open call art show featuring 57 objects by 34 artists. The only criteria for the show were that the objects be at least 12 by 12 inches um, in size and that they take as their subject in some way the blue bonnet. The response has been really incredible. We have uh, mixed media, we have oil and watercolor, uh, woodblock prints, mosaic, collage, uh, you name it, it's in this exhibition. And um, it's really just been a, a wonderful Thing to be able to bring to the public, particularly this year. I think one of the, the best things about the Blue Bonnet is that it can speak to who we are as Texans. Um, blue Bonnets are not exactly the easiest flower to grow. Not everybody knows that, but they can be kind of difficult. They, they don't germinate well. But once that seed germinates, it's tenacious and it will grow in cracks in pavement and in sandy soil, um, in great, rich uh, farming soil, and it comes back year after year after year. So I really think that as we're looking ahead and looking towards the end of this pandemic, um, looking 
looking past that winter storm that had such a devastating impact on so many people, that the blue bonnet is, is, I think, something that we can all rally around. Um, one of my favorite images in the show is a photograph of a blue bonnet that's been iced over. Um, and it's a really powerful image. Probably that blue bonnet didn't make it this year, but if I had to guess, the seed that threw out that blue bonnet is going to be back again next year um, as good as it ever was. And I think that says a lot about what, what we will be um, moving forward as a people.